Hello, ladies and gents, my name is Tom Gibson. In today's video, we're talking about the four things every math teacher should stop saying. First thing you should stop saying as a math teacher is, does anyone have any questions? The reason you should stop saying that is because it almost implies that there really shouldn't be any questions. And you think, well, how could that imply that there shouldn't be any questions? A better way to actually phrase it in a way that questions are actually implied is, what questions do you have? Or even better yet, I wanna hear three different questions about this topic before we move on. Forcing them to put up a question and making it so much easier to come forward with a question because then it's like, oh, well, we're not moving on until we ask a question, so I might as well ask what I actually am thinking about as opposed to, does anyone have any questions? Looking around, nobody has a question. I kind of have a question, but now I think I'm the only one that has this question, and so I'm not gonna ask. So, what questions do you have is a better alternative, or we're not moving on until I answer three questions, so go ahead and ask. The second thing to avoid saying, particularly if you are going over work on the board that the students have already gotten a chance to try to work out, is how do you do this problem? Or what is the answer to this problem? That feels so much heavier than saying something along the lines of, how did you approach this problem? Or what is something that you tried on this problem? If you ask it in that way, it's less of a need for the students to really know that and be 100% sure that they're right. I'd much rather have students being willing and open to want to just try and experiment, say, well, I did this, but I'm not sure if it's right. Whenever a student tells me that, I'm like, okay, no problem. What did you try? Let's see if we can figure it out. Let's experiment. And why do you think that that's not right? Sometimes students will say that and they actually are right or sometimes they'll say it and they are incorrect but giving them the freedom to actually say it instead of saying how do you do this problem or what's the answer to number seven i don't i don't know i tried something but i don't think it's right so, so a better thing than what is the right answer is how did you approach this problem what did you try when you did this problem the third thing that math teachers should stop saying is Yes, that's correct. Okay, this one has a caveat because obviously, eventually we need to tell students that they are right, but I don't want to be so quick to tell a student that they're right. A lot of times I'll be like, okay, so tell me what you did here and why you did it, even though they got it right because I want them to actually articulate what they did and it gives me an opportunity to see if they understand why that's the correct answer. I'll tell them, convince me that this is right. When you're trying to convince someone, you have to use justification. You can't just say, well, you just, you, I just saw that that's how you're supposed to do it. Well, well why? is it like that? Why do you have to do it that way? Why do you have to do it in that order? Why do you, well, how does this piece relate to that piece? So probing students to explain why they think an answer is right is going to force them to dig a little bit deeper into the concept. Also, ironically, the more that I do this, the more confidence students get because I used to just ask questions when they got it wrong. But the more they spend time in my class and the more they get to know the way I teach, they start realizing, oh, I might not actually be wrong here, even though he's questioning me on why I did something and so they feel a little bit more like this might actually be right so I'm still gonna defend this on why I think it's right as opposed to if you're only questioning students when they're wrong they're less likely to defend it because like oh it's already wrong because they're asking me questions about it so I, I just need to try something else instead and along those lines the fourth thing every math teacher should stop saying is no that's wrong now I'm not saying this because I think oh the students shouldn't ever feel like they're wrong because it's gonna hurt their feelings I'm okay with students being wrong but I am trying to further their mathematical thinking so in Instead of saying, oh, no, that's wrong, and then just shutting it down, a way that I can redirect a student to the correct answer while still giving some credence to some of the work that they did is as I'm looking through their work, I'll say, okay, I agree to everything up to this point. I want you to see if you can figure out why I disagree at this point. And with that, students feel like they are actually making progress in this. They just maybe took a right turn when they should have taken a left. This also works with the tricky situation that a student's doing a problem up on on the board and they got it wrong and nobody's catching that it's wrong but I don't obviously want to just go forward but I don't want to just say well it's actually wrong right here because this and blah 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 so I do the same thing in that situation I'll say first I'll ask does anyone disagree with the work that this student has up on the board and if no one disagrees then I'll say okay I agree up to this point I disagree at this point can someone figure out why I actually disagree at this point and then they start analyzing and looking at their own work and looking at the other students work and they're the ones that 
actually analyze the mistake and see if they can learn from it and figure out the correct direction to go, as opposed to me doing it for them and just saying what the answer is and how to do it. And also with this, I don't always actually want to say whether a student is wrong, because I'm still curious about what other students think. So sometimes I'll use a pretty neutral tone when I kind of clarify what they're saying. So I may say something like, so you think two to the negative third power is negative eight because you said with a negative exponent that maybe that means we have a negative answer. Is that what you're saying? As opposed to saying something like, and so does a negative exponent give us a negative answer or does it not? It's already a leading question if I say it like that. They're not actually thinking about the question. They're, like, they're just hearing the tone of like, okay, I obviously did something wrong. I much rather just restate it and then ask, okay, does anyone agree with that? Does anyone disagree with that? And prompt more discussion around it. And then eventually if I need to, I can say, okay, I actually disagree with this. Why do I disagree with this? So those are four things that every math teacher should stop saying, or at least say a little bit less. You will tell your students if they got the right answer or tell them if they got something wrong. Uh, but I think there are more nuanced ways that we can do this in a way that actually promotes more analysis of the problem, more willingness to ask questions and more willingness to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. What are some things that you have said in the past that you have decided, I'm not gonna say it like that anymore? Or what are some things that you say in your classroom that you feel are very fruitful for the mathematical experience of your students? Let me know in the comments down below. If you'd like to stay in the loop with any upcoming videos, I post content here that is meant to help you do innovative work in your classroom, then go ahead and hit subscribe and hit the bell if you'd like to be notified immediately when a new video comes out. My name is Tom Gibson. I hope you learned something today and hopefully I will see you in the next one.